Agora TV. The world is thinking. You know, the reason that it's so difficult, for instance, to learn a second language, according to the old view, was that we had a critical period for language development. Um, most people think it ends roughly with the onset of adolescence, um, when you'll notice that human speech deteriorates rapidly into awesome this and awesome that. And that the reason we can't learn a new language is because our brains are too rigid. But brain plasticity is a competitive process. Here's what I mean by that. When you learn to do something um, and you train it up and do it well, such as learning how to speak English, the networks for that, let's say the pronunciation of each word, Canadian English, uh, the, those networks fire very, very fast, clear, strong signals. And any time you would try to f say something with a slightly different pronunciation, there'll be a competition in the brain, and the more overlearned activity will always win. It's sort of like that kid in the first year class whose parents basically were very verbal at home. The teacher asks a question, he or she puts up her, his or her hand, answers it, gets it right. And then every question after that, basically all the way through public and high school, their hand goes up first. Um, you know, they're, they're feeling better about themselves, but they're, they're learning and the rich get richer. The same thing happens in a way in our, the networks in our brains. And so it's very, very hard to learn a second language, not simply because the critical period of language learning is over, but because you're getting better and better and better at English, if you will. And so true immersion actually will remedy this. So there's fake immersion and true immersion. Fake immersion is my wife and I decide we're going to go to Paris to polish off, polish, pardon me, to polish off our French because we studied it in Canada um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for an hour. We, weren't, we never really learned how to speak French like many Canadians. And so we tell our friends we're going to go to this immersion thing six hours a day in Paris. They say, wow, that's great. Can we come too? Okay, so you already get the problem. And then they come along and there are mirrors of us and our friends from South Africa and Australia and the UK and et cetera, et cetera. We're all English speakers looking at a book that's half in English and half in French. And you get the point, it's not really immersion. But true immersion is when you are basically a big hand from heaven comes down, picks you up and puts you with you know, a family that speaks, you know, um, a particular, a Maasai, yeah, language. And that's it for six weeks. And then it starts to happen because you silence the tyranny of the mother tongue. So, I mean, all of this is just to say that if we think we're being kinder, kinder and gentler to immigrants by dragging out the learning of the language, I think we're making a very big mistake. And, you know, this is what culture shock and brain shock go so hand in hand that immigrant populations very much want to retain as much as they can of the old world and, you know, develop newspapers in their language and so on and so forth. And I'm not against that, but I really think the first thing should be that there should be government immersion courses for all these people. Uh, they can still have, you know, what they care about from the old country, but it'd be much better if they spoke English um, for a million psychological reasons.